Hello, my name is Sam Felton, the Director of the Public Health Collaboration, and welcome to our 2021 virtual conference. It's been a difficult year to say the least, but I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to all of our ambassadors, members, patrons, and scientific advisory board members for all of your support through these difficult times. Without you, we would never be able to continue to better inform the public about the power of lifestyle to help create a better world. Now, before I let the next presenter speak, this conference is 100% free for all forever. However, if you find the content here today valuable, uh, then please consider a £2 donation or whatever you can afford via www.phcuk.org forward slash donate or if you're in the UK, you can simply text PHC to 70660 to donate £2 directly from your phone. And of course, texts are charged at your standard network rate. We hope you enjoy the conference from wherever you are in the world and be sure to get involved in the civil conversation here on YouTube or by using the hashtag PHC vcon 2021 on facebook instagram and twitter thanks for your support and be well hi i'm dr ruth chapsell thank you to sam for asking me to talk about the rethinking diabetes webinars i'm going to start with a bit of background to where the idea came from um, then share some of the highlights from the lunchtime webinars. Then I'll give a very brief overview of the evening sessions and finish with a look at future events. I'm a GP in a little rural practice in North Devon in the southwest of England. I've always been quite lifestyle focused and really tried to engage my patients to make some changes to improve their health with the hope that they could improve their type two diabetes or even put it into remission. I'd often describe the future course of their health as a ship that had veered off in the wrong direction, but that it was within their power to turn that ship around. And often I would get buy-in from the patients, but rarely did we see any results. However, <laughs> that all changed around three years ago when we came across Dr. David Unwin, who was in full type two remission mode by then. Getting results that were absolutely outstanding and as far as we knew, not being achieved in any other centers. So we changed our approach and it wasn't long before we started seeing the same sort of results. Finally, our lifestyle advice was having an impact. I reflected on the years wasted though of giving out advice that failed to help my patients. And then COVID hit, and it was obvious early on that poor metabolic health was associated with, with worse outcomes. Why was Britain faring so badly? Was it because we had the worst diet and really high rates of type 2 diabetes and obesity? Soon, my image of each patient's health journey being a ship was morphing into the obesity pandemic as a super tanker. Was there any way we could turn this around? So I joined the PHC as an ambassador and quickly connected with lots of inspiring people who were helping hundreds, maybe thousands of ships to turn around. Then late last year, I teamed up with fellow PHC ambassador and practice nurse, Gail Gary. Gail and I decided to offer a free unsponsored lunchtime webinar series about the real food, lower carb approach. The aim was to raise awareness and address concerns and just to share our experiences, really. We had no idea whether anyone would want to come, although we hoped they might. Um, so we were a bit surprised when over 100 people signed up for our first one in January. And it's really grown each month. This gives an idea of some of the areas people have joined us from. We've had um, yeah, we've even gone international <laughs> with folks signing up from Kenya, India, Australia and the US. And we've had a great spread of professional backgrounds. So lots of GPs and practice nurses, as expected, 
but we've also had various consultants, pharmacists, social prescribers, medical and nursing students, um, health coaches, nutritionists, and we've had a few surprises, including the odd architect, letting agent, a taxi driver and a housewife. And in February, we realized we really needed to upgrade our Zoom account because we were heading over, we were getting over a hundred participants um, each time. And here we are in our first one in January, quite nervous, but doing our best to paint the picture of why we'll be using this approach and how we engage our patients. A few of our slides were pinched from David Unwin and this one belongs to Catherine Castle. <laughs> and this is a great one. It shows really nicely how choosing a meal with a lower carb content can help us to get off the sugar roller coaster. And here's Gail giving some really practical advice. I really love how she really focuses on motivation and goal setting and also how important food diaries are. Um, we've all had patients who swear they're not eating any carbs and then when you have a go through their food diary together there's there's lots of hidden sugar in their diet that they, they haven't noticed. And this is one of Gail's many success stories. This lady has achieved these incredible results during lockdown, which is absolutely brilliant. We also did some signposting to where professionals can go to for further support. And, um, and that was it for the first one. Oh, there's the low carb real food, real food nurse forum, which has got over a thousand members on it now. And then from session two onwards, we were delighted to be joined by a phenomenal bunch of speakers, all with a wealth of experience and wisdom. First up was Campbell Murdoch. Adapting medications for patients switching to a low carb diet is a really important part of the management. So we were very grateful to Campbell for presenting a really practical and accessible approach to this. He presented a familiar case of a patient with type two diabetes on a plethora of medications, doing his absolute best to improve his health by following a low fat diet and doing lots of cardio workouts, but, frustra but frustratingly not getting anywhere. The case demonstrated that by restricting his carbs, the patient was able to improve his weight, his blood pressure, his liver function, and get his HbA1c down below 48, as well as improving multiple other symptoms. He was able to stop most of his diabetic medication and reduce certain others. So this was a clear example of great outcomes for the patient and the health professional and the CCG, who must surely be delighted with the savings. Campbell emphasised the importance of personalising the approach according to the level of carb restriction, as well as other factors. And so with patient-centred conversations at the very heart of the management. And then session three, <laughs> we were joined by consultant cardiologist, Dr. Scott Murray, who originally trained as an interventional cardiologist and now focuses on disease prevention. We heard about how so much heart disease is due to modifiable risk factors suggesting 80 to 90% of heart attacks may be preventable. And although the development of coronary disease clearly involves a complex interplay of pathological processes, there is evidence that at the root of this is hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. As we know, dyslipidemia is a significant factor, but as Scott demonstrated, there is considerable nuance and it's not as simple as good HDL versus bad LDL. We learned that the APOB over APOA1 ratio is an important risk factor for acute MI and that this is a surrogate of insulin resistance. So if we simply focus on LDL and ignore underlying insulin resistance, we really are missing the point. Scott pointed out that insulin, sorry, that hyperinsulinemia has been recognized since 1996 
as an independent risk factor for ischemic heart disease. But sadly, that has been largely ignored with the focus being turned to LDL lowering therapies instead. I thought this slide was really interesting. It shows that control of cardiovascular risk factors really isn't very good. So this comes from um, a paper in the European Heart Journal looking at a pan-European population. So one of the standout examples for me was that out of over 3,000 people with obesity, 92% were on lifestyle treatment, but only 24% achieved a BMI below 30, and around 7% achieved target waist, um, their target waist circumference. And then 87% of patients with type 2 diabetes were on anti-diabetic medication, but only 36% achieved HbA1c below 48. Does that sound like successful treatment of risk factors? And similarly, disappointing for blood pressure as well. This really does show that there is little to celebrate in terms of reaching targets. Perhaps time to review the strategies. So having heard that the root cause of so much cardiovascular disease is insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia, how can we lower insulin? And avoid getting to this point. And this slide summarizes it really nicely. Number one, we should maximize nutrient density with emphasis on high quality animal protein. Number two, we should minimize glycemic impact by limiting or avoiding insulinogenic carbs. Number three, we should keep our insulin pulsatile by avoiding snacking and using time-restricted eating or fasting. And number four, we should do some exercise, that helps too. And this fantastic slide shows how metabolic health really can improve within weeks. So this shows how someone has gone from 0% time and range to 100% in 14 days. This is using a freestyle Libra and restricting their carbs. So the take home messages for me from Scott's talk were not to obsess about LDL, it's a crude marker, and we'll get more bang for our buck if we aim to improve glycemic control, blood pressure, weight, and insulin levels. So session four. So this was our most recent webinar just last week. And we were joined by Dr. Kaiser Singh Sadra, who's a GP in Slough in Berkshire. This was a really popular session and it was fantastic to see so many new clinicians joining us for the first time. Kayser did an excellent job of showing the scale of the problem and how he has managed to get remarkable outcomes in a very challenging population. So this slide shows what a high prevalence of type two he has in his community. And this one shows what can be achieved with lifestyle alone. So here are 55 ships being turned around. Just look at those HbA1c's falling. Absolutely incredible. Part of Kayser's success is due to the fact that he has really understood his patient population with careful attention to cultural and religious issues. And he's done a lot more than just give them a diet sheet. He's focused on all of the four pillars. And very importantly, he's used continuous glucose monitoring quite a lot. And this has been really helpful for his patients to get them to really understand the impact of different foods and also exercise on their blood sugar. This one shows what a difference it can make by cutting out potatoes. Oh dear, there's porridge, not as healthy as we thought. This slide shows how effective postprandial exercise can be, and it can be as simple as a walk or some housework. Kayser also uses David Unwin's sugar infographics, and this slide shows how fibre flour can be an excellent substitute for wheat flour or maize flour. His talk was actually full of practical and actionable information, so I love this. So for someone who really can't manage without their bread, here is a, a lovely um, option for them, which is very quick and very low in carbohydrate. 
Here's um, a nice summary of his, of his lifestyle approach. The other secret to um, Kay's success is that about eight years ago, he developed an amazing community project. Um, so the over 50s are able to meet up, I think it's every day in Slough, um, to join in for some exercise and relaxation and very importantly, for some social connection. And then the cherry on the top, just like with David Unwin's practice and many others using this approach, um, Kayser's surgery is fantastic value for the, for the NHS. So that's a run through of our lunchtime webinars. Um, I'll just briefly mention the evening sessions as well. So in February, um, our growing UK low carb practitioners network invited anyone that we thought might be interested um, to join us to find out more about the real food lower carb approach. We started with a video montage showing lots of health professionals all talking about how low carb is working for them and their patients. And if you haven't seen it, it's on the PHC YouTube channel and it's really, really good. And we had some fantastic presentations from these inspiring doctors. David Unwin presented the evidence for the low carb program. Peter Foley demonstrated the low carb program digital app. Ollie Hart talked about health coaching and David Cavan discussed the use of the low carb approach in type one diabetes. It was a really fantastic evening and I had a really welcome flurry of emails shortly afterwards from people saying it had inspired them to change the practice. So it was so good, we decided we'd hold a sequel in March. Um, and this time we focused on, um, on how carb restriction can also be a very powerful intervention in a number of other chronic conditions. So we were so pleased to be able to produce a video montage of specialists talking about how this fits with their experience. And this video is also on the PHC YouTube channel. Then we heard about the importance of fatty liver disease from David Unwin and how cutting carbs can and does reverse it very effectively. Campbell Murdoch did an excellent job of showing that insulin resistance forms the basis of poor metabolic health. And Trudy Deacon very decisively busted some nutrition myths about low carb. So that's where we're up to. We've got a few more sessions in the pipeline that we're really looking forward to as well. Um, and we'll be covering issues such as the safety and efficacy of carb restriction in patients with renal impairment and in children with obesity. And how to help patients with type 1 diabetes and also those who struggle with sugar and carb addiction issues. And that's it. So we're very grateful to all our amazing speakers who have all given up their time for free. Um, and to all the other members of our low carb network as well, um, who've been really supportive in many ways. And I am especially grateful to Gail, who is a complete star and is possibly the most well connected person I know. Um, and actually, this has been a real adventure for both of us. We've learned loads and it's been um, yeah, a pleasure to be part of this growing community of professionals, all focused on improving metabolic health and getting that super tanker out of the canal. Thank you for listening.